that Obama came out and said the terrible things that Gaddafi was doing, the guy that was in charge of, of Yemen, Salah, had just slaughtered about 50 people demonstrating. That didn't make the news. Just as it's not making the news now, Alex, as the Saudis, as Hillary and Obama and McCain and little Lindsey Graham call our allies, the beheaders in chief are slaughtering Yemenis for doing nothing. Over 7,000 of and them. And they're now dead. executing people for poetry. And, and again, they're bombing Yemen. It's not making the news. And then you saw the deal that came out two weeks ago. The United States sold Saudi Arabia $2 billion worth of, quote, smart bombs. And who's in charge of the mass murder going on in Yemen that's not making the news? It's Yemen. Now the, the United, Arab, Arab, United Arab Emirates are bringing in mercenaries from South America to go into there, along with Qatar and Kuwait. And also, when was the war against Yemen announced? It was announced on March 26, 2015, from Washington, D.C., the Saudi ambassador. And then we saw this little guy, Blinken, who plays an assistant secretary of something over in Riyadh right after they start bombing and says how the United States is an ally in this murder, supplying reconnaissance, air refueling, intelligence, and armaments. It's not even making the news. And then, Alex, I wonder why I wonder why they hate us. I don't understand. Only because we're part and parcel, murderers incorporated, slaughtering people around the world. And then they want to seek revenge. I don't understand. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right, I mean, so I- So let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right, so I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up. from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming oil out. is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and and during the summertime and the pressures build it up. It oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I, and I, I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer-funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> This is how a new dark age, ruled by a totalitarian new world order, is ushered in. 345 global sycophants burned 300,000 tons of carbon dioxide to meet in Paris to impose a legally binding carbon taxation plan that will be proactively enforcing climate justice. The first legally binding carbon reduction plan the people of the world have faced. This afternoon, French police fired tear gas at a group of demonstrators close to the place de la République. So there was a planned demonstration, a climate change protest demonstration that was supposed to happen today. Hundreds of thousands indeed were expected, but it was cancelled because, as you know, there's a state of emergency in the country at the moment after the terror attacks in Paris. And we salute the people of Paris for insisting this crucial conference go on. An act of defiance that proves nothing will deter us from building the future we want for our children. Obama has already spent $784,825 on his motorcade alone. The New York Daily News reports President Obama's flight to the City of Lights emitted roughly 189 tons of carbon alone, burning 19,275 gallons of jet fuel, reports the Daily Caller. His entire trip will send more carbon dioxide into the air than the combined emissions from 31 U.S. homes over the span of a year. When you don't have to worry about a, po a positive return on investment, you can waste a lot of taxpayer money. There's hardworking Americans whose money has been invested. And I keep hearing this. Well, there's an element of risk. And I understand there's an element of risk. But when you take hard-earned American tax dollars and you throw it at an agenda, rather than at a, at a strategy, and you see the waste. Only in this town can you squander money and not worry about it because there's an endless supply of it. And if, if you don't have enough money for that project, don't worry. We'll get more money. We'll just, we'll just raise taxes and we'll throw some more money at that and we'll reallot money to you. And I, I, I think that's really where we're at today. The State Department spent $407,868 on limos. The contracted propaganda press spent $376,957. When it was all tallied up, the American taxpayers have already spent $1,805,282 to send a group of elitist New World Order stooges to another country to legally scale back their taxpayers' living standards through incorporated Agenda 21 initiatives. Once again, the liberal sociopaths are ignoring the scientific facts and statistics. Instead, pulling at our heartstrings and ramming lies and guilt down our throats in order to achieve their New World Order agenda. They lie to people and say that penguins cannot swim in the Antarctic and that in the Arctic, polar bears are dying, even though National Geographic has to admit polar bear numbers are up five-fold since the 1950s and are now invading areas not previously known to be in their range. 
Most sufferers of Stockholm Syndrome will tell you that Obama and company need that money because they are important people making important decisions. However, the importance of any of these New World Order lackeys will likely be as a stain in the footnote of history where stupidity, hubris, and greed raised its grisly self-important criminal head to once again challenge humanity's intelligence and resolve. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. John Bound for Infowars.com. The latest victims of social justice warrior political correctness brainwashing is a kindergarten class in Captain Johnston Blakely Elementary School in Washington State. Teacher Karen Keller is on a quest to indoctrinate her class with the mindlessness of gender equality by banning boys from using Legos. That's right. She told the Bainbridge Island Review, I always tell the boys, you're going to have a turn. And I'm like, yeah, when hell freezes over in my head. I tell them, you'll have a turn because I don't want them to feel bad. She started this exercise in futility because boys were flocking to the colorful blocks during their free choice playtime, while girls tended to play with dolls or crayons. She tried using pink and purple Legos to attract the girl students, but she found that ineffective. So that led to an outright ban for boys. Keller defends her actions by saying they're fair because she's giving different students the tools they need to succeed. Wonder why there's such a control freak attitude in Bainbridge Island? We'll take a short ferry ride to Seattle where officials want to end the term brown bag. There's definitely something in the water or in the coffee in Washington State. Rob Dew reporting for Infowars.com. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. This gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? Think about it. This is Darren McBreen, and I want you to break the matrix at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. And listen to The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on your mind. According to a recent BBC report, Turkish President Erdogan has warned Russia's President Vladimir Putin not to play with fire over his country's downing of a Russian jet. Erdogan is refusing to apologize to Putin over the tense events where Syrian-backed rebels using American arms blew up a Russian rescue helicopter responding to a downed Russian fighter jet that was shot down by Turkish military forces. In fact, Erdogan has accused Putin of slander for insinuating that Turkey buys its oil from ISIS. He told France 24, they are lies, they are slander. We have never, never had this kind of commercial relationship with any terror organization. They have to prove it, and if they can, Tayyip Erdogan will leave office. Bob Baer, a former CIA operative, believes the situation in the Middle East is out of control and shaping up to look like the beginning of World War III. Baer told CNN, it's not just Russia and Turkey, it's Iran and Saudi Arabia. It is expanding rather than contracting, and nobody has a strategic plan. Turkish President Erdogan told CNN International his country will consider it an act of aggression if Russia takes down a Turkish plane violating Syrian airspace. On Thursday, Moscow deployed its advanced S-400 air defense system in Syria. The weapon will be used to protect the Russian airbase in Latakia. Ministry spokesman Igor Koneshenkov said his government was sure that Russian planes destroying IS targets were guaranteed not to be attacked from the U.S.-led so-called anti-IS coalition. Russian President Vladimir Putin said Thursday during a news conference the United States knew the flight path of the aircraft shot down by Turkey. The American side, which leads the coalition that Turkey belongs to, knew about the location and time of our plane's flights 
We were hit exactly there and at that time, he said. Putin said Russia's military had passed on flight details to the Americans. Putin then indirectly accused the U.S. of colluding with Turkey.